Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the Kokoni EC1 3D printer. I have big thoughts about this little printer. Controlled entirely by a phone app, it offers one-click printing to enable anyone, beginner to experts, to start printing right away. I was printing within two minutes of unboxing this printer. The app also includes a few AI modeling tools. But how does this tiny printer perform? Let's find out. Before we begin, this EC1 was provided for me to review by Kokoni. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. Let's get into it. The Kokoni EC1 is a very small form factor, filament-based 3D printer. It has a 100mm by 100mm by 58mm build volume, which is extremely small. In fact, it's even smaller than almost all of my resin printer's build areas. But that small build volume allows for the printer itself to be very compact, easily fitting on a desk or on a shelf. It has a magnetic, flexible print bed that makes it very easy to remove prints from. The bed is non-heated, which limits the printer to mostly PLA filaments. It comes with a standard 0.4mm nozzle with a fan that acts as both the hot end and the print cooling fan. Around the back is the filament holder. The Kokoni EC1 uses replaceable 1.75mm filament cartridges, which they sell, but you can also use your own spools of filaments. We'll get back to that in a bit. The extruder motor is built into the printer itself, but interacts with the extruder gears built into the cartridge. This pushes the filament through a Bowden tube at the top into the hot end. These cartridges contain 220 grams of filament each, and the Kokoni app makes it easy to load and unload the filament to change colors. And that brings us to the Kokoni app. Everything about this printer is controlled by this app, from browsing their 3D model library, to slicing files and starting the prints. They even have a few different 3D modeling tools in the app. You start off by connecting the printer using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Afterwards, you can browse their collection of 3D models, categorized into useful subcategories. After finding a model you want to print, you can select it to get an estimated size and print time, and then tap print when you are ready. There it brings you into the edit view, where you can visualize the model. Here are the only two slicing options you have. You can scale an object up and down, and you can select between three different qualities, low, medium, and high. There are no other settings you can adjust. You can't change infill densities, turn on or off supports, or any other normal settings within a slicer. As an experienced hobbyist, at first I was sad about the lack of control. However, having taught quite a few people how to 3D print, this lack of choice is actually a benefit. It can be extremely overwhelming to get a 3D printer, and then suddenly have to learn 15 different extremely important settings just to print an object. The Kokoni app just works. It is very conservative with settings, as it will default to supports being on, relatively slow print speeds, and somewhat dense infill percentages. However, as a user, you just need to know, the higher the accuracy, the longer the print time. That is great for beginners and kids. After clicking print, you can select the printer to use. It gives an estimation on how much filament is remaining on the cartridge, but unfortunately that isn't very useful because it doesn't tell you how much filament that print is expected to use. That percentage is also just an estimation, as there are no RFID chips in the cartridge to store how much has been used. It simply just resets to 100% when you change cartridges, and it doesn't stop you from printing past 0%. So, if you frequently change cartridges, those percentages are meaningless. Next, you are brought into a monitoring screen. It will send the job to the printer, and from there you can close the app without interrupting the prints. It'll preheat the printer and start printing. The monitoring screen does tell you how long the estimated print time is. As I mentioned at the beginning, I was starting my first print within two minutes of unboxing this printer. Unbox, plug in the power cable, download the app, connect, and press prints. It was a delightful experience. So on to the printing itself. The Kokoni EC1 comes calibrated out of the box with the bed level pre-adjusted. For me, the nozzle seemed a bit low, as it would scrape across itself for the first layer or two. While you could adjust the nozzle height by adjusting the knob, there are no instructions on how to do so, so I didn't adjust it. This results in the prints having a bit of an elephant's foot, where the first layers are too squished and they can bind together. But overall, I was very impressed with how well this printer printed. Besides the first layer, the rest of the prints turns out great. The layers are consistent, there is little noticeable Z-wobble or other artifacts that I could tell. There tends to be more supports than I think is necessary, like all of the supports for this 3D bench, but they are pillar type supports and are generally pretty easy to remove. This Curiosity Mars rover was printed in four separate prints and look amazing. The top surfaces are very smooth and all the parts fit together nicely. There is the faintest Z-banding on the main body if you look under it at the right lights, 
but this is a very nice print. These benchies also turned out great. This model was not available on the Kokoni model library, however I had to upload it as a custom model. This was easy to do so, you just sign into their website and upload the file. It then appears in the app where you can start the prints. The supports here were a little more problematic, and it took a bit of time to fully remove them all. But once the supports were gone, these bungees look pretty good. The bottom of the hull has some warping on the side opposite of the cooling fan, but otherwise looks great. The same can be said for almost every other model I tried. Very easy to start the prints, and they all turned out great. This Rook is probably the best example of a stress test that I have. For some reason, this model didn't have any supports enabled, so we can see how the Kokoni EC1 handles overhangs. And the underside of the stairwell is a little rough, but it recovered nicely. And there are small blobs where the layers start and stop. It's not the highest quality prints that I've seen, but I'd still be perfectly okay with the quality of the prints from the EC1. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, these filament cartridges. We've seen companies in the past try to follow the 2D printer ink market, where you sell extremely cheap printers, but require expensive proprietary filament cartridges to work. Kokoni does not follow that model. They do sell, and recommend using, their filaments, but the printer isn't locked down to them. The cartridges themselves are 220 grams of filament, and sell for $11.90 USD plus shipping. This does equate to about $54 per kilogram, which is pretty expensive. Since the extruder gears are part of the cartridge, you do need to open one up in order to use your own filament. But, once the back is opened, you can feed in any PLA filament that you want. I think this is a pretty good compromise. As a beginner, you can use Kokoni's filament cartridges for the ease of use and to not have to think about it. But if you want to try out a new color, like this tri-colored copper green and purple filament by Tron XY, you still can. You need a separate spool holder though, as the cartridges itself is too small for normal spools. Finally, let's talk about the AI-powered 3D modeling features available in the app. First is a tool which turns a selfie into a 3D bust. You take a picture of your face, and it'll create a neck-high bust which you can 3D print. While the tool generated the model just fine, I could not get the model to actually save in order to print it. It just got stuck on the saving screen. The model itself seemed very generic, obviously not able to capture the actual details of a face like a full 3D scanner. The second tool also did not work for me. This is a photogrammetry scanning mode, where you take a picture of an object from many different angles, and it will stitch them together into a 3D model. The tool has a great video and prompts to walk you through the 25 or so pictures you need to take. However, every time that I got to the end, it would always label most of the pictures as unqualified, and it would not finish processing. This tool is still marked as beta, so it seems there are some issues for them to work out. It would be a fun tool to have available in the app though, to make 3D scanning accessible to everyone. The app's model library also lacks any kind of search or sorting features, which makes finding a specific print very difficult. And for prints with multiple parts, like this Curiosity Rover, you can't simply jump back to the model from your printing records to find the next part to print. You have to scroll through the entire library to find the model again. So while the app is generally well designed and user friendly, there are a few rough edges that I would love to see ironed out. So in conclusion, I rather like this Kokoni EC1. It definitely caters to kids and true beginners, and would be excellent in an educational setting. You can just hand the app to a student and have them browse through hundreds of curated models and press print. You don't need to teach the user any complicated slicer settings, just select and go. The extremely small print volume means that even the largest prints only take a couple of hours. The print quality was surprisingly good, and it was happy just sitting in the corner of my office printing away. The printer enclosure is stylish, and more approachable than the intimidating appearance of many other printers. That could make a surprising difference in the educational space. If you are a hobbyist, however, I think you could quickly outgrow this printer. The lack of control over the settings and small print volume would be limiting once you venture away from their curated objects, and you start to upload and print your own. The lack of an estimated filament use before the prints makes it difficult to judge if you have enough filament remaining, and there's no detailed time estimation for how much longer the prints will take. The Kokoni EC1 is priced at $349 US dollars, with it currently offering $100 off, bringing it down to $249 US dollars. There are many, many entry-level 3D printers in the $200 to $300 price points that may have more features, but the Kokoni's out-of-the-box printing experience was the smoothest that I've experienced. If you find yourself in search of a kid or beginner-friendly 3D printer, and don't mind trading more advanced features for a smooth beginner experience, then I would happily recommend the Kokoni EC1. So thank you all for watching my review of the Kokoni EC1. What was your favorite feature about it? What features do you think it's missing the most? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you are still in the market for entry-level 3D printers, check out my reviews of the King Rune KP3S or the Ender 2 Pro. I think you'd enjoy them. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.